denying Studio Ghibli movies are highly popular. The fact is that a lot of people grew up watching these films and they have amassed a very big following through the years. You can ask anyone who is a Ghibli fan right now to describe these movies or to tell you what emotions they emit and I can assure you they will tell you one of these things. Nostalgia, magic, wonder, fantasy, and that they feel like a dream. In a dream, there are countless possibilities. Anything that you can think of just is, and there's no question about it. There's no detailed explanation of how this imagined world works. And with movies, and specifically Ghibli movies, as an audience, we never wonder how are these things happening? How can there be a castle floating in the sky? Why is there a cat that's also a bus flying around with this rabbit-like creature? How can a little fish turn into a girl? These are things that, of course, can only happen in movies, but also in dreams. Another thing about dreams is that, other than the possibility of them being completely fantastical and made up, they can also draw from what you already know. Yes, there's a lot of fantasy elements in Ghibli movies that are foreign to what we know as humans, but there's also this sense of familiarity when you watch these movies. These stories are often about the mundane lives of the characters that find themselves in the middle of these magical and unknown places or situations, such as Shihiro in Spirited Away or Sophie in House Moving Castle. They also find themselves befriending extraordinary characters, such as Mei and Satsuki in Totoro or Sosuke when he found Ponyo. But even these fantastic and magical characters find themselves admiring mundane and everyday things. For example, Ponyo. She gets so excited over little things such as how ramen is prepared or how ham tastes like. And those things make her so endearing. When you think about it, this little fish magically turned herself into a girl. But she is surprised by the taste of ham or how someone prepares ramen. <laughs> These are little things that, of course, we don't even think about twice because we're just used to them. We, we don't get excited over ham. <laughs> but in this movie, it just seems like the most extraordinary thing in the world. And that's the thing about Ghibli. They make magic out of the most ordinary moments. Another great moment and possibly one of the most memorable scenes in any Ghibli movie is the scene in My Neighbor Totoro when the sisters are waiting for the bus. They're patiently waiting when all of a sudden this forest creature, Totoro, appears and starts waiting for the bus next to them. First, Satsuki was spooked, but then she gave Totoro an umbrella. And as it rains, Totoro is completely ecstatic over the sound that the raindrops make on the umbrella. We can infer that he's never had an umbrella before and something as minuscule as the raindrops falling on it is enough for him to be extremely excited. I find Ghibli films to be extremely nostalgic, even if it's one that I'm seeing for the first time. The first one I saw was Spirited Away and I watched it when I was in the fourth grade. Even then, I felt this overwhelming sensation of a world that was so magical that I wanted to visit. However, I didn't rewatch that film again until I was 18 and that's when I watched all of the other Ghibli movies. For some reason, most of them felt very familiar, like I had seen these characters or these places in a dream before. I said earlier in this video that these movies have a feeling of familiarity and it all comes down to several things. One, the characters feel like real people. They are not perfect. For instance, Shihiro, who when we first meet her, she is a girl who is kind of annoying, uh, very whiny, and very scared. There's no denying that she can be a bit irritable, and for a main heroine, she definitely cries a lot and is not very tough at first. By the way, I just want to say I love that she cries a lot and that she's not very tough, that she's very scared and whiny, because I'm all for strong female characters in movies, but also not all female characters have to be strong to be a lead or to be perceived as real women characters or girl characters. Anyways, that's... I guess another topic, but yes, <laughs> I, I love that Shihiro is like this. But what I'm saying is that for a heroine in we can perceive as a children's movie, she definitely isn't what you would think a main character would be at first. All of these characteristics that I just said about her are completely normal for a young girl who just found herself in a really strange place without her parents. This is basically how anyone would react in her situation. I know I would be freaking out, but that's what I love about it. She seems like a real little girl who is scared of, out of her mind to be in this really strange place where she's seeing all of these spirits and ghosts 
and her parents turn into pigs. I mean, that would scar anyone. <laughs> the fact that she is imperfect is what makes her such a familiar character. Also, in Ghibli movies, not even the antagonists are 100% evil and unlikable. For example, Lady Eboshi in Princess Mononoke. While she is definitely the clear antagonist in that movie, one could argue that her intentions are actually not that bad. Ultimately, she wants to help humankind, even if she has to destroy nature around her. She gives housing and jobs to people who are deemed inferior. Her methods are obviously interfering with our protagonist's goals, but I believe she isn't 100% evil. And that is something that is very common in Ghibli movies. The characters have dimension. Another thing that helps this feeling of familiarity when you watch Ghibli movies is the slow pacing. And don't get me wrong, slow pacing in movies is not something that is bad. Slow pacing is generally not what you first think of when you think of animated movies, especially because they are often related to being children's movies. To try to make children engage with what they're watching, animated movies are usually very fast-paced with colorful characters full of jokes here and there. Animation, in Ghibli's case, is not a genre but a medium. It's a medium for them to tell stories that aren't necessarily made specifically only for children. It's stories that anyone can enjoy. There are so many instances where we're just observing the character live. Nothing extraordinary is happening, there's no dialogue, nothing that furthers the story but it's a way to get to know the characters more deeply. By observing how they act in a mundane situation, we feel that realism within the fantasy. There are so many examples of this, but I want to talk about this specific one in Kiki's delivery service. Kiki spends her first morning in her new home in the bakery. She wakes up and still in her pajamas, she goes to the bathroom that's located outside. She goes in and after she flushes the toilet, she peeps outside for a second and sees the baker is out there. She waits for him to go away so she can rapidly and embarrassingly go up to her room. This is such a normal little scene. Nothing exciting happens, nothing that really matters at all, but it gives us this glimpse of what Kiki is currently going through. She's a young girl who's still not comfortable living somewhere new with strange people. She doesn't want to embarrass herself. It's such an intimate moment that serves no purpose other than to make you see Kiki as a real person with real feelings, who does normal things outside of being a young witch apprentice. Ghibli films are full of moments like this with such attention to detail that it gives you that feeling of humanness. Humanness. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. Humanity? Never mind. This normalness mixed with the fantastic elements in Ghibli movies is what gives them this dreamlike sense. And of course, paired with some of the most beautiful animation ever created. Ghibli is very famous for its serene backgrounds, usually nature-related, breathtaking architecture and scenery. Watching these films gives me such a nostalgic feeling, longing for places I've never been before. Going back to dreams, when we describe something as dreamy, we're usually referring to something that is calming, that brings us peace, something that we wish we were experiencing right now. Ghibli movies undeniably have this effect. So what do you think? Do you feel like you're dreaming when you watch a Ghibli movie? If you do, which movie does that the most for you? For me, it's definitely Spirited Away. Like I said, it was my first Ghibli movie and it continues to be my favorite. And I don't think that's ever going to change. The feelings that I get when I watch that movie are indescribable, even though I tried to describe them in this video. But let me know what your Ghibli watching experience is like. If you have specific scenes or movies that make you feel this way, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you have other movies that make you feel like this, doesn't have to be Ghibli, please let me know as well in the comments. Alright, so if you want more movie discussions, movie recommendations, and more Ghibli content, please don't forget to subscribe. See you guys on the next one. Bye!